Good day, dear students. Today we are going to start with lecture number 32, which is going to be our last lecture for our course, Total Quality Management. Now, uh, in this lecture we are going to be studying about the ethics and corporate uh, social responsibility ethics and corporate social responsibility so when we speak about the conceptual foundations of corporate um, situations and or uh, conceptual foundations of it so in order to understand the conceptual foundation of a business it is necessary to understand the goals of the organization so in order to understand the conceptual foundation of a business, because if a business ka, uh, conceptual foundation if you want to know it, then you have to understand the goals of the organization. Hai. Now, is this a singular goal to make profit or is it to produce a product or service for a customer? So is a single goal to make profit or to produce karna kisi bhi product or uh, service for a customer? Ke liye? Now, whether or not it is recognized by those in the business, the purpose of business is to provide a product or service to someone and from this point may arise. So, obviously, if you recognize that there is a purpose to uh, business, then you can see that the purpose of business is provide a product or a service to provide karna, jisse wo profit hasil kar sake. Now, Deming felt strongly that if the uh, prime motivation of an organization was towards satisfying the customer, profit would result um, in the, con uh, the converse is not true. So, Deming ka uska ye cheez thi ke, uske point of view se wo ye cheez ye ka hai ke prime motivation jo thi kisi bhi organization mein, um, especially towards satisfying the customer, kisi customer ko satisfy karne ke liye, wo um, profit jo hai usse result hota hai. Obviously, jo customer satisfy hoga, to aapke profit bhi increase hoga. Iska ulta jo hai wo uh, conversion uski true nahi hai. Now, there are countless businesses who uh, fail to survive despite achieving high levels of profit shortly before their demise. Or uh, as a countless businesses hain, jo fail ho gaye uh, or survive nahi kar paaye, um, even though ke unho ne high level of profit sh um, achieve kiya, um, because shortly before their demise, kyunke um, apne yani end hone se thoda sa hi arsa pehle unko both high level ke profits huye, lekin ek dam se phir wo businesses survive nahi kar sake, flop ho gaye. Now, when we speak about ethical models, now there are a range of ethical models which may be applied to, uh, by an organization. So, a range of ethical models which we can say that any organization can apply it. So, uh, they are dependent upon the ethical stance of the organization concerned and arguments can be made for each one. So, as a joe have, we can say that there are a range of ethical models, as a range of ethical models, which you can apply to any organization. And they are dependent on your ethical stance. So, ethics is very important role play So, ethics is very important role play in an institution. Play karte so, uh, or obviously, ethical stance kisi bhi organizational organization concerned hai, uh, uski, ya uske arguments can be made for each one. So, obviously, hum dono ke liye arguments create kar sakte hain. Now, when we speak about uh, ethics in an organization, we talk about egoism. So, egoism kya cheez hai? Egoism is the concept that individuals uh, should always seek the greatest personal uh, benefit regardless of the consequences for others. So egoism jo hai, hum keh sakte hai, aisa concept hai, jis mein jo hai na individuals ko jo hai, um, unko shayad seek karna chahiye, uh, greatest personal benefits ko, um, bishak regardless unke ke kya consequences hai unke dousron ki taraf. Now it is a central tenet of many economic theories. Uh, ye ek central tenet hai, kisi bohut saare economic theories ka, that is how humans are programmed to behave. Jis ki base pe humans ko program kiya jata hai, uh, behave karne ke liye. Now the extension of this to businesses is that they should always maximize their benefit in a given situation. So extension is ki jo hai, wo uh, ye keh sakte hai ke koi bhi businesses mein, ke, um, that they should always maximize their benefit in a given situation. So, unko apne benefits ko obviously maximize karna chahi kisi bhi situation mein, regardless of the other impacts. Beshak uske impacts koi se bhi ho, uske bawajood unko, yani apna maximize uh, karna chahi apne efforts ko. 
Now, so for example, a business would not consider the social or ecological impact of polluting rivers with affluence from their plants. So obviously, a business to have who ye cheese consider ni karega ke wo social or ecological impact kya hai? Jab wo apne waste products jo hai, koi bhi plant hai, chemical plant hai, koi factory hai, jab wo daryaon mein apna waste dal rahe hain, theek hai? To usse unke daryaon pe kya asar hoga ya social or ecological impact kya aega? Usko koi bhi business nahi sochta. Now the only reason they might consider avoiding such action would be the potential or actual cost of polluting. Uh, exceeding the cost of not polluting. So, uh, through legislative penalties, loss of market share. So, if they can think in this situation, um, uh, maybe in the waste of their waste products or pollute their uh, waste or waste or garbage, if they can think in this situation, if they can think in this situation, if they can think in this situation, if they can think in wo unke actual cost se exceed kar rahi hai ya zyada ho rahi hai in the view of ke agar unko koi jaise fines lag jate hain koi legal penalties lag jati hain ya koi lost loss of market share ho jata hai to us surat mein phir unko wo ye cheez hoti hai ke phir wo koshish karenge ke wo aisa kadam na uthaye otherwise wo is cheez ke bare mein sochte bhi nahi hain companies wale ya factories wale now formalism now the other part ethics mein jo aa jata hai wo formalism aa jata hai now formalism comes from the uh, works of philosophers such as kant and holds that there are a certain uh, set of natural laws of ethics uh, polak 2001 ne ye kaha ke formalism jo hai wo aata hai philosophers ke uh, kaamon ke through nisbatan jaise kant hai uh, us he is a philosopher who has written about formalism and holds um, that there are a certain set of natural laws. A certain set of natural law has a ethics has a do follow karna chahiye har kisi ko. Now uh, that these laws can be clearly defined and apply in all circumstances. There is no room for interpretation. So in ko agar hum laws ko keh sakte ke hum unko clearly define kar sakte aur apply kar sakte in sare circumstances mein. To phir there is no room for interpretation. To phir obviously unki interpretation mein koi jaga nahi rati. So, for example, uh, slave labor is wrong or moving production to an economy where cost of compliance with ecological mandates are reduced because of lower regulatory requirements uh, is not acceptable. So, formalism mein hum ye judge kar sakte hai ki agar koi, uh, for example, slave labor jo hai, hum wo kehenge ke wo galat hai, usko hum kabhi bhi sahi nahi keh sakte. And phir, moving, uh, yani gulam, uh, गुलामी करवाना के लेबर से उसके बाद फिर किसी भी प्रोडक्शन जो है उसको ऐसी जगह यानी इकोनॉमी में मूव करना जिस जो कॉस्ट ऑफ कंप्लायंस के साथ ना मैच करता हो और उसके इकोलॉजिकल मैंडेट्स डिफरेंट हो तो उसको फिर वो ऑब्वियसली रिड्यूस कर देता है लोअर रेगुलेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट्स को वो भी एक्सेप्टेबल नहीं है now virtue ethics is another form of this approach where an individual or group of individuals seeks to do what is right regardless of the consequences for themselves or their interests so obviously virtue ethics aise hai jisko hum keh sakte hai ke wo ek aisa approach hai jahan pe ek individual ya koi group hai individuals ka wo seek karta hai ye judge karne ke liye ke kya sahi hai regardless jo bhi koi uske consequences uske nataiye jo bhi nikalte hain chahe unka interest hai usme apne liye ya interest nahi hai jab bhi the third would be relativism. Ab relativism ko agar hum judge karte hain, the relativist tradition suggests that uh, morals and thus ethical behavior are not absolute, uh, but are rooted in the traditions, values or practices of individual or a group. Ye aap check kar sakte hain, um, website pe www.moralrelativism.com uh, 2011 ki site. Now, relativist uh, tradition jo hai, wo ye cheez keh rahi hai, ke wo aise morals ya aise adat apke bata raha hai, ya apke aise ethical behavior bata raha hai, thik hai, jo absolute nahi hai, balke wo aise nahi hai, jo aapne adopt kiye honge, but wo aise hai, jo aapke, aap, کہ اندر اس کی جڑیں مضبوط ہیں جس چیز کی آپ کے traditions میں ٹھیک ہے آپ کے values آپ کی جو آپ کو جو practices اور values آپ کی society اور آپ کے culture اور آپ کے family سکھاتی ہے یا کوئی individual یا group میں جو چیزیں آتی ہیں 
इंडिविजुअल या ग्रुप में जो चीजें आएंगी उसमें ये प्रैक्टिसेस और ट्रेडिशन और वैल्यूज जो है कंसिडर किए जाते हैं और ये आपके रिलेटिव ट्रेडिशन कहलाएगा सो अ कंपनी माई डिफाइन इट्स ओन सेट ऑफ वैल्यूज इट मे बिकम कॉम्प्लिकेटेड वेर एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑपरेट मल्टी नेशनली सो एक कंपनी जो है वो मे बी अपने डिफाइन कर सकते हैं अपने सेट ऑफ वैल्यूज को ठीक है और इट मे बिकम कॉम्प्लिकेटेड और वहां पे कॉम्प्लिकेटेड में भी हो जाए जहां पे एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो है वो ऑपरेट करता है मल्टी नेशनली नाउ नॉर्म्स अब एक्सेप्टेबल बिहेवियर आर डिफरेंट अराउंड द ग्लोब और ऑब्वियसली एक्सेप्टेबल बिहेवियर क्या होना चाहिए उसके जो नॉर्म्स हैं उसकी जो तरीके हैं वो वर्ल्ड वाइड जो है ना डिफरेंट है ना फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन सम पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड प्राइबरी ऑफ ऑफिशियल इज एन एक्सेप्टेड कॉस्ट ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस वाइल इन अदर्स इट अट्रैक्ट आउटरीज एंड हैवी पेनल्टीज सो कई जगह पे आप ये कह सकते हैं कि जो है एक्सेप्टेबल बिहेवियर जो है हर जगह पे जारी बातें डिफरेंट है तो कई जगहों पे वर्ल्ड में रिश्वत देना जो है ऑफिशल्स को वो एक पार्ट ऑफ बिजनेस करने का हिस्सा बन जाता है ठीक है और एक कंसिडर किया जाता है कि आपका ये आपको ये कॉस्ट बेयर करना ही है किसी भी बिजनेस को और कहीं जगहों पे दुनिया में इसी चीज को रिश्वत को बड़े गुस्से से और पेनल्टी से देखा जाता है और उसके यही सजाएं हैं ठीक है अगर रिश्वत लें तो सो ऑब्वियसली डिफरेंट सिचुएशन में डिफरेंट कॉन्सेप्ट हैं सो वेन वी स्पीक अबाउट द नेक्स्ट वन इज यूटिलिटेरियनिज्म सो उसमें हम कहेंगे कि बेस्ड ऑन द आइडियाज ऑफ जॉन स्टूअर्ट मेयो अमंगस्ट अदर्स यूटिलिटेरियनिज्म इज द आइडिया दैट द बेस्ट कोर्स ऑफ एक्शन इज द वन दैट क्रिएट्स द मोस्ट बेनिफिट फॉर द ग्रेटेस्ट नंबर ऑफ पीपल तो जॉन स्टूअर्ट मिल के मुताबिक ऐसे काम में अगर हम ये अप्लाई करते हैं कि कोई भी ऐसा एक्शन लेना जिससे ज्यादा से ज्यादा लोगों को बेनिफिट हो वो बेस्ट वे ऑफ एक्शन होगा सो दिस मेक्स सेंस एज एन एब्सट्रैक्ट कॉन्सेप्ट और ये ऑब्वियसली एब्सट्रैक्ट कॉन्सेप्ट के सूरत में uh, इसका लॉजिक बनती है ना बट एज विद मोस्ट मॉरल फिलोसफीज लेकिन ज्यादातर मॉरल फिलोसफीज के साथ अगर हम जज करें तो इट इज कॉम्प्लिकेटेड टू अप्लाई और उसको अप्लाई करना जो है वो ज्यादा कॉम्प्लिकेटेड है नाउ फॉर एग्जाम्पल टू डू बिजनेस डिसीजन नीड टू कंसिडर द गुड ऑफ कॉम्पिटेटर्स दे हैव वर्कर्स विद फैमिलीज एक्सेट्रा टू सो अगर आप एक्सट्रैक्ट सेंस के कॉन्सेप्ट में देखते हैं तो मॉरल फिलोसफीज उनकी जो है वो उसमें कॉम्प्लिकेट हो जाता है अप्लाई करना और एग्जाम्पल में अगर आप देखें तो एक बिजनेस डिसीजन है कोई भी ठीक है तो उसमें आप जब कर रहे होते हैं तो अब ऑब्वियसली अपने कॉम्पिटिशन की अच्छाइयां भी तो देखते हैं उसमें कि उन, वो क्या अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं तो उनके भी तो वर्कर्स की फैमिलीज हैं एंड हाउ डू वी डिटर्मन हाउ मेनी पीपल विल बी अफेक्टेड एंड टू वट एक्सटेंट बाय आवर एक्शन और फिर ये हम कैसे डिटरमिन कर सकते हैं कि कितने लोग जो है इस चीज से अफेक्ट होंगे और किस हद तक अफेक्ट होंगे हमारे नतीजों की वजह से या हमारे एक्शन की वजह से सो इफ अप्लाइड रिगरसली देर कुड बी very protracted uh, debate and information gathering about apparently simple business decisions so agar hum kehte hain ki hum unko bahut rigorously apply karte hain ya protract karte hain so information gathering jo hai um, even chote chote business decisions ke bare mein wo bada mushkil kaam ban jayega gather karna wo information so when we speak about ethics in practice now practically uh, organizations and especially those which are uh, profit oriented will adopt a combination model a combination model adopt kar lete so on certain issues um, they will take a formalist approach murdering rivals uh, might uh, fit well into this category so obviously formalist approach mein agar hum dekhte hain to hum keh sakte hain ki um, मल्टीपल प्रैक्टिकली ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो है वो स्पेशली जो प्रॉफिट ओरिएंटेड होते हैं वो कॉम्बिनेशन मॉडल को भी यूज कर लेते हैं सारी चीजों का तो कुछ ऐसे अप्रोचेज हैं जो फॉर्मुलस्ट अप्रोच होगा वो में भी शायद अपने जो उनके कॉम्पिटिशन में होंगे उन लोगों को कत्ल कर देना बेहतर समझेंगे वो भी इस कैटेगरी में आ सकती है चीज सो दे देर मे बी थिंग्स अपॉन विच दे चूज टू टेक अ मोर यूटिलिटेरियन अप्रोच सो मे बी वो दूसरा अप्रोच यूज करना चाहें इस पर ना फॉर एग्जाम्पल having a factory 
in a low wage area and paying slightly higher than usual wages or uh, offering improved welfare provision might be deemed better than providing jobs in more developed nations where citizens already uh, enjoy higher standards of living. So, دوسرا طریقہ جو ہے کمپنیز کیا کر سکتے ہیں کہ ایک ایسی جگہ پہ آپ لو ویج ایریا میں آپ فیکٹری اپنی کھول لیں اور وہاں پہ آپ جو عام یوزول ویجز چل رہی ہیں یعنی لو پیڈ ویج ہے ادھر کم سیلریانز ہیں تو ان میں ان کے اوپر اب تھوڑے سا ذرا انکریز کر کے سیلری آپ ورکرز کو آفر کریں تو آفیسلی آپ کے پاس کام کرنے کے لیے لوگ آئیں گے اور پھر می بی آفرین امپروڈ ویلفر پروویزن جو ہے مائٹ بی ڈیم بیٹر دین پروائڈنگ جابز تو می بی آپ یہ جو ویلفیر پرویزن دینا وہ زیادہ بہتر سمجھیں گے نسبتاً وہ فیکٹریز یا کمپنیز نسبتاً کہ آپ ایسی جگہ پہ جابز دیں جہاں پہ جو آرڈی ڈیویلپ نیشنز ہیں اور جہاں پہ آرڈی جو ان کے سیریزنز ہیں یہ لوگ ہیں وہ ہائر سٹینڈرڈ ایم لیوین آرڈی انجوئے کر رہے ہیں اور ان کو ہائی سیلریز کی پہلے سے ہی عادت ہے تو می بی آپ ایسی جگہ پہ جائیں گے جو غریب جگہ ہو گئی غریب ملک ہوگا اس ایریے میں آپ پیتر یعنی کچھ کمپنیز ایسا چوز کر لیتی ہیں یہ پروسس یوز کرنا now this aspect of utilitarianism has a dose of relativism in it too اور یہ aspect جو ہے اس میں دونوں relativism and utilitarianism کے دونوں کی جو ہے نا وہ ایک مکسچر بن جاتا ہے now outside of these kinds of situations the business is free to pursue self interest so اس طرح کی situations کے باہر اگر ہم دیکھیں تو وہ businesses اپنے آزاد ہوتے ہیں کہ وہ اپنے self interest کو جس طرح مرضی pursue کریں now for example it may be possible to sell a luxury product for a lower price but the company would maximize revenues as far as the market will bear since no one is forced to buy the product and thus any economic harm they come to is self-inflicted so ایسے میں آپ کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ کوئی بھی جو ہے کمپنی پوسیبلی وہ لگجری پروڈکٹ کوئی جو ہے وہ لوڈ پرائیس پہ سیل کرنے پہ اگری ہو جائے اور لیکن اس کمپنی کی جو میکسمائز ریوینیوز ہوں گے ٹھیک ہے جہاں تک مارکٹ ان کو بیر کر سکتا ہے تاکہ کیونکہ نو ون اس فورس ٹو بائی دا پروڈکٹ کیونکہ کسی کو زبردستی تو آپ پروڈکٹ خریدنے پہ نہیں مجبور کر سکتے سو دس ان کے اوپر جو اکنومک ہارم آئے گی وہ ان کی سیلف انفلکٹڈ ہوگی کہ اگر وہ لگجری پروڈکٹ بیچ رہے ہیں اور کم قیمت پر بیچ رہے ہیں تو وہ ان کی سیلف انفلکٹڈ ہارم ہے جو وہ اپنے اوپر خود بیر کر رہے ہیں خود لے کے آ رہے ہیں نا وڈ وی سپیک اباؤٹ مکسڈ ایتکل موڈل تو مکسڈ ایتکل موڈل میں ایگوئزم فرمالزم یوٹیلیٹیرنزم or relativism so if none of the preceding apply then maximize company benefit does this speak to any of our core values are there a range of stakeholders or um, stakeholders to be considered or are there different views on the case so each other things that you have a mixed ethical model may add at the end even now ethics in practice when we speak about ethics in practice now clearly the exact balance will be determined by the organization so clear uska jo exact balance hai wo to ek organization hi determine kar sakta hai so it is important that the core values of the organization clearly set out their ethical principles openly and explicitly so important ye zyada hai ke unke jo core values hai ek organization ke wo obviously um a clear set jo hai na ہو کہ ایتھیکل پرنسپلز ان کے اوپنلی اور ایکسپلیسٹلی نظر آنے چاہیے ہیں now this area is an auditory auditory in the field of quality management اور obviously یہ area جو ہے quality management میں ایک different الگ سی چیز شو ہوتی ہے so in that we eschew the usual concepts of co-creation and consultation اور اس میں ہم کہہ سکتے کہ ہم جو عام طور پر جو concepts ہیں co-creation کے یا consultation کے and suggest that there are certain immutable rules which are not to be transgressed or as we can say that maybe in the field of quality management we can say that the usual concepts of usual concepts of co-creation or consultation they suggest that there are certain immutable rules which can't be transgressed so of course the usual ideas of leaders modeling the behavior and explaining why the ideas are so important will apply so وہاں پہ obviously جو leaders ہوں گے company کے organization institution کے وہ model کر دیتے ہیں اپنے behavior سے اور explain کر دیتے ہیں اپنے ideas کے کیا چیز important ہے apply کرنے کے لیے 
Now an ethical decision making model, now if we speak about an ethical decision making model, so the question would be fully define the situation, who is affected, what is at stake. So we uh, can define kar sakte hai ke, uh, fully hum question ko situation ko define kar sakte hai ke is se koon affect ho raha hai aur kya cheez jo hai wo tau pe lagi hui hai then relevance uski hogi to this business relevance kya hai business ki this is this would be a ethical decision model like decision model hai ye phir constraints hum dekhenge to legal regulatory ya market constraints hai kya cheeze aisi pabandiyan hai legal hai regulatory hai ya market pabandiyan lagi hui hai then ethical framework हम judge करते हैं तो ethical framework हमारा क्या होगा covered um, by formal principles or principles of decency or uh, justice और हम उनको कह सकते हैं कि वो um, formal principles cover कर रहे हैं उनको या ऐसे principles of uh, decency or justice cover कर रहे हैं if not do relativism and utilitarianism apply ये दोनों चीजें apply करती हैं if not seek the best outcome for the organization or phir agar nahi to phir apne organization ke liye better outcome search kare now an ethical decision making model uh, based upon the foregoing and the work of the uh, valens in 1995 an ethical decision model might be suggested when significant business decisions need to be made so hum ethical decision model jab use karte hain jab khas taur pe kisi company ke liye business ke liye aise decisions jo hai na jo bahut significant ho wo karne zaruri ho us waqt hum ethical decision model use karenge so a decision making process needs to be both explicitly deployed within the organization and to become part of the inherent behavior और ऐसे डिसीजन मेकिंग प्रोसेसेस जो है उनको जरूरी है कि वो बहुत एक्सप्लिसिटली डिप्लॉयड भी हो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के अंदर भी एंड दे बिकम पार्ट ऑफ द इनहेरेंट बिहेवियर और एक ओवरऑल बिहेवियर के भी हिस्सा बन जाए ऑफ ऑल एम्प्लॉयज इन ऑर्डर टू हैव मैक्सिमम इम्पैक्ट ताकि वो मैक्सिमम इम्पैक्ट हासिल हो सके उससे नाउ फेलियर ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन फ्लो so information was held by those with authority to act but who did not act so information aisa jo hai na diya ja sakta hai jo um unse yani created jo um those with authority to act jinko authority di gayi hai act karne ke liye but us pe wo act nahi karte फिर या तो हम ये कह सकते हैं या फिर हम कह सकते हैं इट वाज नॉट हेल्ड बाय दोज विद अथॉरिटी टू एक्ट एंड इट वाज नॉट सॉट बाय देम या जिनके पास अथॉरिटी नहीं थी उन्होंने ही नहीं उसको होल्ड किया और उन्होंने ही उसको नहीं कोशिश की या इन्फॉर्मेशन वाज हेल्ड बाय दोज विदाउट अथॉरिटी टू एक्ट ऑन एंड वॉज नॉट शेयर विद दोज हु डेड और इन्फॉर्मेशन जो है जिनके पास अथॉरिटी नहीं थी उनके पास थी लेकिन उन्होंने उनके साथ शेयर ही नहीं की जिनको अप्लाई करती थी जिनके पास अथॉरिटी वो नहीं थी चेंजेस लाने के लिए तो फेलियर ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्लो इस वजह से कम्युनिकेशन आपकी डिफिकल्ट हो सकती है इट वॉज शेयर विद दोज विद अथॉरिटी टू एक्ट बट दे डिड नॉट टेक इट सीरियसली एनफ टू एक्ट तो उन्होंने उसके साथ शेयर किया ऐसे जिन लोगों के पास अथॉरिटी थी लेकिन उन्होंने इस चीज को इतना सीरियसली नहीं लिया कि उसके ऊपर वो एक्ट कर सके तो इस तरीके से हम कह सकते हैं कि फेलियर्स ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन फ्लो एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में भी हो सकते हैं या किसी भी इंस्टीट्यूशन या किसी भी कंपनी में so communication plays an important part in uh, total quality management also so communication is more much more than the physical transmission of information ye usse zyada hai kuch so it starts with the will to communicate aur yahan pe communicate karne ka uh, will jo hai uh, udhar se shuru hona chahiye ye now to be successful both the transmitter uh, and the receiver must believe in the need for the communication और इस सूरत में अगर सक्सेसफुल होना है तो हम कह सकते हैं कि उसका जो ट्रांसमीटर और रिसीवर जो है दोनों उनको जो है जरूरी है कि उनकी कम्युनिकेशन प्रॉपर हो ना इफ वी स्पीक अबाउट द मैनेजर्स रोल तो मैनेजर रोल जो है वो भी इंपॉर्टेंट है टोटल क्वालिटी में द रोल ऑफ मैनेजर इज टू इंश्योर दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्लोज फ्रीली एंड स्पीडली Uh, for information is the lifeblood of the organization on which decisions are made or obviously um, role of manager ye hoga ke wo information jo hai wo tezi se aur freely aur uh, speedily jo hai wo uh, spread ho pure organization mein kyunki uh, jo organization ki ek um, lifeblood hai theek hai wo uh, isi ki base ke upar decisions kiye jate hain
in the information space. So if the information is poor or takes too long or is blocked, the function of the organization is impaired. So if the organization has the information is not right, it is poor, or it is taking too much time, or it is blocked, then the function of the organization is uh, defect, or it is affected by it. So a manager is an educator. Ki tarah hai. So it follows that the manager must ensure that the free flow of information continues. Or ek cheez follow karti hai ke manager jo hai usko ensure karna hai ke jo um, information jo hai uska free flow ho. Now if the manager's roles um, as coach, education is the key to ensure that everyone within his or her responsibility understands the need and mechanisms for effective communication. So if the manager role ka jo hai, manager ka jo role is coach, ki hai, to uska education is key to uh, ensure that he educates everyone and educate everyone and tell their responsibilities so that they can properly understand it. And then the mechanisms of the uh, organization ke, wo, ya effective communication can be run in the organization. Mein. So with the, by the manager's actions, uh, will subordinates understand the need to take action where appropriate and be part of the communication chain. So it is very important for them to be a communication chain. Ka hissa ban now when we speak about the manager's role, the manager must become a role model for this type of behavior which ideally should start with the CEO and be actively supported by the whole senior management team. So manager ka role jo hai wo CEO se start ho ke jo hai na kehte ke usko behavior aisa ho ke wo support kar raha ho, actively support kar raha ho pure system ko aur ye shuru hona chahiye senior management team se. Or unko bhi wo support kar raha. So thus this uh, process of education towards the achievement of full and free flow of information is the heart of empowerment and the organization functioning as a holistic process rather than a hierarchy based on uh, functional proper basis, power basis. So ye power game nahi hai sirf jo hai na top management ki but agar uh, flow of information proper hoga usse employees ko empowerment milti aur obviously wo phir ek achhe tarike se perform kar sakte hai. Now this links with uh, the total quality view that everyone in an organization should be part of and understand their contribution to achieving the mission and the vision of the company. So ye link uh, is cheez ka kahan se banta hai uh, total quality ke view se ke uh, ek organization mein kyunke total quality ka view ye hai ke ek organization mein har kisi ko us uh, ka part hona chahiye aur har kisi ko apne um, contribution ko understand karna chahiye aur phir mission ko achieve aur uska vision of company jo hai usko achieve karne ke liye uh, har kisi ka jo hai na cooperate karke milke chalna as a teamwork wo important hota hai now ethics and uh, total uh, magar isko summarize kar dete hain to hum kahenge ke ethics aur total quality management are inherently linked so hum agar ethics ke bare mein padhe the to ethics aur total quality management jo hai wo ek sath bahut unka link bahut close hai now at the heart of both lies respect for the individual integrity decency and justice so agar aap unke uh, heart pe dekhe to end uh, of the day jo hai wo har koi jo hai us pe respect hai individuals ke liye unki integrity unki decency aur justice pe so ethical business behavior leads to both tangible and intangible benefits as well as costs or uh, ethical business behavior jo hai wo both tangible or intangible benefits dono deti hai aur plus uh, cost ki taraf bhi benefit deti hai so however ethical organizations are culturally richer as well as having a sound basis for long-term profitability which is not built on undue exploitation of people or natural resources. So um, uh, obviously ethical organizations jo hai, wo culturally rich hote hai zyada, as well as having a sound basis for long-term profitability or obviously unka ek sound base ban jata hai uh, long-term prof profit gain karne ke liye do, which is not built on undue exploitation exploitation nahi hoti logon ki or natural resources ki now when we speak about service quality so service quality uh, the dimensions of service quality now there are many approaches of delivering service quality so uh, but they all start from an understanding of what the key elements of service quality are so uh, approaches to have a delivering service quality ke wo, uh, start agar hum usko understand karne ki koshish kare to uske key elements to hai uh, janna bahut zaruri hai ke service quality basically hai kya 
Now, five elements create a holistic view of any service environment. Firstly, the tangible aspects of the environment must look right. So, koi bhi paanch aise major jo hai na elements hai jo ek create karte hai, ek view jo hai ke service environment kis tarah ka hona chahiye aur usko yani proper tarike se kam kaise karna chahiye. Note that right does not necessarily mean that it should be luxuriously appointed in all cases. So, हम ये note करते हैं कि हम ये नहीं कह सकते कि हर चीज में वो properly, obviously, luxuriously appointed हो हर case में. But a fast food outlet, let's say कि for example, a fast food outlet needs primarily to look clean and efficient. Will not apply to a customer that a lot of money has been spent on excessive luxury. So, obviously, अगर हम fast food को एक restaurant के साथ compare करते हैं तो restaurant पे आप expect करते हो कि आप ज़्यादा bill दोगे और वो चीज़ और आपकी luxury sitting हो और एक comfortable situation हो. Obviously, क्योंकि वहाँ पे आप you're going to be getting more for the value for what you have paid. Now, a fast food outlet जो है ना उसका एक primarily क्या उसका वो function होना चाहिए कि वो साफ सुथरा बस दिखे ठीक है और एफिशिएंट दिखे ताकि कस्टमर को ये चीज भी आइडिया ना आए कि इसके ऊपर बहुत ज्यादा एक्सेसिव लग्जरी स्पेंड की गई है now when we talk about the five dimensions of service quality, अब हम ये five dimensions अगर और elements देखते हैं तो एक तो tangibles हैं, ठीक है the physicality of the service, ठीक है appearance of the physical environment, equipment, personal and communication materials. Communication materials क्या है? Service और appearance of physical environment क्या है उसकी? तो ये tangible characteristics में आ जाएगा, dimensions में आ जाएगा. दूसरा है responsiveness, willing to do help, willingness to help customers and to do so in a timely fashion. Customers को help करना और proper time में उनको help करना तो ये responsiveness में आ जाएगा. Reliability, the ability to perform the promised service dependably and accurately. और reliable ताके हो ताके आप जो भी आपने promise किया है service उसको आप proper तरीके से और dependable तरीके से accurately आप perform कर सके. फिर assurance now, knowledge and courtesy of staff and their ability to convey trust and confidence. Or as a assurance create karna jis mein uh, knowledge and courtesy ho staff ki or unki ability ho um, jis ko wo um, trust ko convey kar sake or confidence ko uh, convey kar sake. Then uh, empathy aa jati hai. So provision of a personalized uh, service or and a caring attitude. Or as a provision jo hai personalized service ka ya as a caring attitude unka hona chahiye. So ye empathy mein aa jati hai. So ye five dimensions honge service quality ke. Now the dimensions of service quality, the final and most challenging piece of the jigsaw is empathy. Last two and us mein empathy tha ye sab se zyada mushkil or challenging hai. Empathy is the ability to put yourself uh, in the place of the customer. Apne aap ko aap customer ki jaga pe jab rakke sochte hai. So ye sab se zyada mushkil kaam hota hai. So an empathic survey is uh, make the customer generally feel at the center of the service and cared for. So obviously agar empathic uh, service aap de rahe hai customer ko to wo phir uh, usko aisi feeling aayegi ki usko uh, care uski ki ja rahi hai. So an obvious place for empathy might be in funeral uh, directors uh, it is necessary to pick up on the cues from the bereaved in terms of the types of service and products uh, that will fit them uh, best at a time when they are unlikely to wish to have long dis discussions about choice of casket or flowers so empathy up maybe us jagah pe aap show kar sakte hain jaise jo funeral services kar rahe hote hain theek hai um उसमें ज्यादातर इम्पोर्टेंट हो सकता है किस तरह के क्योंकि उस टाइम पे लोग ऑब्वियसली इतने डिस्टर्ब होते हैं अपने लव्ड वंस की डेथ से कि वो मे बी ताबूत नहीं चूज करना चाह रही है फ्लावर्स चूज नहीं करना चाह रही तो उस वक्त अपना केयर शो करना या अपने टाइप ऑफ सर्विस और प्रोडक्ट्स को ऐसे फिट करना कि वो दूसरों को तंग भी ना करे और प्रॉपरली उनको सेटिस्फाई भी कर दे विदाउट डिस्टर्बिंग दैम तो वो चीज इम्पोर्टेंट आ जाती है सो परहेप्स लेस ऑब्वियसली a car sales person uh, might improve the customer experience and long-term performance by recognizing and responding to customer preferences rather than attempting to upsell and get them to buy the most expensive car and options that they can be persuaded to. So perhaps so less obviously jo hai like car sales person jo hai wo shayad improve kar sakta hai customer experience ke long term performance uh, uh, uska jo hai na ke wo recognize kar sake response kar sake customer ki preferences ko nisbatan ke wo usko sabse zyada mehangi gaadi bechte ho phir uh, usko persuade kare ke wo le so 
measuring service quality would be historically service quality has been measured by customer satisfaction audits where uh, customers either rate satisfaction on an uh, ordinal scale or give verbal feedback on their experience of the service a combination of both so agar hum measure karna chahte hain service quality ko to hum keh sakte historically hum measure kar sakte hain isko uh, service quality ko ke um, customer satisfaction audits ke through theek hai aur jahan pe customers jo hai unka um, rate of satisfaction jo hai wo zyada है या ओरिजिनल स्केल के हिसाब से हम देख सकते हैं तो वी कैन से वी कैन गिव वर्बल फीडबैक उनके एक्सपीरियंस पे या उनके सर्विस पे या दोनों चीजें दे सकते हैं नाउ व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट द फाइव सर्विस क्वालिटी गैप्स अब गैप्स कहां से आते हैं पांच गैप्स होते हैं ठीक है जो सर्विस क्वालिटी में आ सकते हैं नंबर वन वुड बी द गैप बिटवीन द कस्टमर व्हाट कस्टमर एक्चुअली एक्सपेक्ट एंड व्हाट द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन थिंक्स दे एक्सपेक्ट इस जगह से गैप आ जाता है कि कस्टमर uh, एग्जैक्टली exactly क्या एक्सपेक्ट कर रहा है आपसे और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को क्या समझ आ रही है कि कस्टमर आपसे क्या एक्सपेक्ट कर रहा है Now the second gap uh, between the organizational perception of customer requirement and the formal service specifications. Or dusra gap aa sakta hai origin uh, organizational perception ka shayad customer requirements ke nisbatan aur uska phir formal service specifications. Third gap could be service delivery as compared to service specifications or service delivery jo hai us specifications ke mutabik agar hai ya nahi usko compare karna. Fourth gap aa sakta hai communication to delivery gap. any communication may problem or and fifth gap could be that the sum of other gaps that the total gap between customer expectations and their perception of actual performance or dusra jo hai gap aa sakta hai ki total gap jo hai wo customer expectations ke beech mein aur unke perception jo hai jo actual performance hai uske beech mein kya hai now when we speak about delivering service quality now uh, मैंने आपको पिछले लेक्चर में बताया था कि मेट्रिक्स ग्राफ्स होते हैं जिनके थ्रू हम एनालाइज कर सकते हैं सो अगर हम कस्टमर परफॉर्मेंस देखना चाह रहे हैं तो हम कह सकते हैं कि चैलेंज एनालिसिस मेट्रिक्स ग्राफ के थ्रू हम ये जज कर सकते हैं अब हम इम्पोर्टेंस भी देख रहे हैं इसमें परफॉर्मेंस भी देख रहे सो चैलेंज एनालिसिस मेट्रिक्स Um, it was adapted from uh, Cap Capon and Mills in 2002. Usme maintain performance aa jata hai, theek hai high level, low level, medium ya low level pe, pe uh, zero to a hundred percentage aa jati hai. So potential to reduce resources, pe improvement required, and second priority for improvement. Ye chizhe judge ki jati hai. Then another example of challenge analysis matrix example would be. कि इसमें भी हम परफॉर्मेंस और इम्पोर्टेंस देख रहे हैं कस्टमर की सर्विस uh, के बारे में सो रिलायबिलिटी आ जाती है रिस्पॉन्सिवनेस आ जाता है अश्योरेंस एम्पथी एंड टांजेबल्स ये चीजें इस तरीके से आप यानी उनको जज कर सकते हैं इस ग्राफ पे Now, when we speak about people, the approach of, to delivering service quality value can be seen to be similar to that uh, for delivering manufacturing quality value, as noted above. So, approach. If we can judge, we can judge. So, 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 if we can judge, we can judge. there is a significant additional element in the delivery of service activity which is a human element aur isme obviously a significant additional element ban jata hai jisme delivery of service jo hai service activity wo ek human element ka part ban jata so gap analysis is a little prosaic and uh, reductive to address how we inspire confidence or delight our customers with our, our interaction so hum gap ko aise dekh sakte hain ki analysis ko ke wo ek uh, reductive uh, tarika hai address karne ka ke hum uh, kaise inspire kar sakte hain confidence ya hum apne customers ko kaise delight kar sakte hain apne interactions ke sath now one way of looking at this is a pitoma by john carlson ek tarika isko dekhne ka hum keh sakte hain ki epitomize jo hai na john carlson ke point of view se hum dekh sakte hain 1987 mein usne kaha ki who coined the term moment of truth jisne moment of truth ka word coined kiya so carlson who was chief executive of saas swedish airlines from 1981 to 1994 and presided over a transformation of business focus and performance 
which was customer link in 2006 suggested that every time a customer has a contact with an organization on the phone or face to face or these days on the web there is an opportunity to make an impression so carlson ke mutabik jo hai wo ye cheez kehta hai ki jab bhi aapko customer ke sath aap deal karte hain theek hai kisi bhi business transaction mein chahe wo aap face to face kar rahe hain chahe aap phone mein kar rahe hain chahe aap web site se kar rahe hain वो हर कोई वो एक स्टेप है एक तरीका है अपने कस्टमर के ऊपर एक अच्छा इंप्रेशन डालने के लिए नाउ पीपल इफ वी कंसीडर सो इफ द कस्टमर्स एक्सपेक्टेशन इज सर पैस द पॉजिटिव इंप्रेशन इज क्रिएटेड और अगर कस्टमर की एक्सपेक्टेशन पे हम पूरे उतर जाते हैं तो फिर ऑब्वियसली एक अच्छा इंप्रेशन क्रिएट होता है एंड इफ द कस्टमर फील्स देयर एक्सपेक्टेशन हैज नॉट बिन मेट देन अ नेगेटिव इंप्रेशन इज गिवन और अगर कस्टमर सेटिस्फाइड नहीं होता या उसको लगता है कि उसकी एक्सपेक्टेशंस पे पूरी नहीं होती ऑर्गेनाइजेशन या कंपनी तो फिर वो ऑब्वियसली नेगेटिव इंप्रेशन में आ, जाती है चीज नाउ फीडबैक एंड सिस्टमैटिक इंप्रूवमेंट अगर हम जज करते हैं तो इनकरेज स्टाफ टू सीक फीडबैक फ्रॉम कस्टमर्स एंड टू इंश्योर दिस रीच इज द राइट पीपल इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन so we can say that we can encourage uh, staff to uh, uh, seek feedback taaki wo apne customer se hum staff ko encourage kar sakte hain feedback wo le le taaki ek pure acche organization mein puri ye feedback distribute bhi ho fir hum unki jade aur causes problems ki jo hain unko seek kare so uh, we us taaki hum ye judge kar sake ki important kya hai aur cheezon ko kaise theek kiya ja sakta hai and um, things for the person especially in front of you it is more important to ensure issues do not arise again aur ye zyada zaruri hai judge karna ke dobara se masle ya problems create na ho to unko is tarike se khatam karna chahiye now telling those who experienced a problem uh, how you will ensure it doesn't happen again is also a good way of building assurance and making them feel important aur dusron ko ye batana ke unke experiences problem se kaise rahe ये एक बेहतर तरीका है कि आप इंश्योर कर सकें कि ये दोबारा गलती नहीं हो और उसमें फिर बेहतर तरीके से आप जो है ना इंश्योरेंस बिल्ड कर सकते हैं एंड उनको भी ये फीलिंग दे सकते हैं कि वो भी इम्पोर्टेंट है इस चीज के लिए सो so, अगर हम जज करते हैं कि कार्जन के अप्रोच को सो ऑल दो कार्जन अप्रोच हैज एलिमेंट्स ऑफ सिस्टमाइजेशन एंड इट इज मच मोर अबाउट एम्फेटिक रिस्पॉन्सिस टू कस्टमर्स एंड एम्पावरिंग द फ्रंट लाइन टू डू वट इज नेसेसरी एंड टू इन्हांस कस्टमर वैल्यू सो कार्जन के अप्रोच अगर हम कहते हैं कि बहुत सिस्टमैटिक है अगर एलिमेंट्स उसके तो लेकिन और उसका जो है वो ज्यादा एम्पैटिक एम्फेटिक रिस्पॉन्सिस हैं कस्टमर्स की तरफ तो फिर हम कहते हैं कि वो एम्पावर कर रहा है फ्रंट लाइन को कि वो किस तरीके से काम करे और क्या ऐसी चीजें जरूरी हैं या नेसेसरी है जो कस्टमर वैल्यू को इन्हांस कर सके सो एज नोटेड अर्लियर सिस्टम्स एंड प्रोसेसेस आर नेसेसरी टू अचीव क्वालिटी सो अगर हम पहले की तरह नोट करें तो हम ये कह सकते हैं कि सिस्टम्स और प्रोसेसेज जो है वो बहुत नेसेसरी होते हैं क्वालिटी अचीव करने के लिए सो बट इन दम दे आर नॉट सफिशेंट लेकिन वो अगर खुद से हम देखें तो वो फिर सफिशिएंट नहीं होते सो विदाउट इंडिविजुअल्स टेकिंग रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड बिहेव इन अप्रोप्रिएटली द इफेक्ट ऑफ गुड प्रोसेस विल बी लिमिटेड सो अगर जब तक वो हम कह सकते हैं कि नेसेसरी है अचीव करने के लिए क्वालिटी बट अगर um, उनको इन दम सेल्स इफ दे आर नॉट सफिशियंट अगर वो खुद से सफिशियंट नहीं है ये चीज करने के लिए सो विदाउट इंडिविजुअल्स टेकिंग रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी अगर इंडिविजुअल्स जो है वो रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी अपने काम की ही नहीं लेते एंड बिहेव इन अप्रोप्रिएटली वो अगर और प्रॉपर तरीके से बिहेव नहीं करते तो दैट वुड अफेक्ट द गुड प्रोसेसेस प्रोसेसेस और वो अफेक्ट करेगा और वो फिर लिमिट हो जाएंगे so this approach also allows for more readily exceeding customer expectations rather than just minimizing gaps so ye approach agar hum judge karte hain to ye approach hum keh sakte hain ki zyada allow karta hai zyada readily jo hai customer needs ko exceed karne mein aur unki expectations pe pure utarne ke liye rather than ke sirf gaps ko minimize karne mein now when we summarize that and summarize and um, see the significance of it we would say that service quality has much in common with manufacturing quality 
especially in terms of execution. So the emphasis on human element is much more significant, however, and requires an integrated thought process to deliver maximum value, uh, customer value. So service quality, if we say that common is manufacturing quality, both are common, they are both getting together, then if we say that they are only getting together in the execution, they are getting together. So emphasis on the human element may be more significant, but the requirement requires an integrated thought process to deliver maximum customer value. And an integrated thought process requires so that the customer value can maximum deliver. Now when we speak about implementing quality management, now quality management if we talk about implementing it, so let's say that although the preceding chapter is taken as a whole provides sufficient detail on how, implement, how to implement a quality management approach, this section is designed to provide a summary of principles to be borne in mind and one approach to the journey which has been successful. So even though we have read all the lectures and chapters in the past few lectures, کہ آپ quality management approach کو کس طریقے سے implement کر سکتے ہیں یا کس طریقے سے آپ اس کو ایک organization میں ڈال سکتے ہیں but یہ والا جو حصہ یہ may be section ہم design ہم نے کیا ہے کہ ہم آپ کو تاکہ summarize کر دیں principles جو ہیں جو آپ کے mind میں رہنے چاہیے اور ایک approach جو ہو وہ ایسا ہو جو journey کو جو آپ کے سفر کو successful کر دیں so the important caveat uh, is that this section does not purport to uh, present a best practice approach nor even that such an approach exists. So what follows is a way, not the way. So important caveat is section ka ye cheez hai ke aap ye dekhen ke um, the purpose uh, to present jo hai wo ek best practice aap present kar sakein, best practice approach present kar sakein. اور ایسا نہیں جس کو جو ہے آپ کہہ سکے کہ ایسا اپروچ اگزیسٹ نہیں کرتا سو آپ نے یہ دیکھنا ہے کہ اے وے نکالنا ہے تا وے نہیں بتانا Now, uh, we'll focus capability. If we speak of if action to transform is to be taken there uh, is a need for three elements to come together. So, اگر uh, action to transform کرنا ہے کسی institution میں تو پھر تین elements کا کٹھا ہونا بہت ضروری ہے Smith and Tosi 1999 proposed one such model for organizational learning which applies equally well to quality تو اس نے ایک organizational learning میں ایک principle اجاد کی Smith and Tosi نے جو maybe quality کے لیے بھی اسی طریقے سے apply ہوتا ہے Now, for individuals to act they will uh, they need the will this uh, will be bound up with their personal motivations and the culture and politics of the organization. So individuals ka agar wo better tariqe se act karna chate hai to unka unke andar ek khaish honi chahiye, ek will honi chahiye karne ke liye. Aur ye will jo hai unki jo khaish hai, achcha perform karne ke liye, ye unko personal motivation mein unke help hoti hai. Aur phir ye ek culture or politics jo hai organization ke wo create ho jata hai. So they also need the capability اور ان کے اندر capability بھی ان کو ضرورت ہوتی ہے this will mean they need to have the skills the techniques and experience that allows them to deliver change اور ان کے اندر ایسی capabilities ہونے چاہیے ہیں جس میں ایسی techniques یا ایسی skills ہونے چاہیے ہیں ان کے پاس یا ایسی experience ہونا چاہیے جو ان کو help out کرے تاکہ وہ change واقعی لے کے آ سکے but to make it an attractive preposition to act, they must perceive that this is a priority of the organization. Like if you have to work in a proper way, then you have to judge that this is an organization. Leaders and managers must encourage and create an environment where the desired behaviors are supported by systems and procedures as well as their own actions and statements. So obviously leaders and managers have to encourage and create an environment where they have desired behaviors to support the systems and procedures so that they have to show their actions and statements. Now the will focus capability model would be like this that will act, would act, then focus and could and capability. So focus capability is all about their will combined. 
Now, will focus capability in many organizations try to begin uh, total quality management with a campaign to win hearts and minds and lots of training? So, both uh, organizations are saying that they are trying to do total quality management ka campaign to run from the heart and from the mind and they are trying to training in the heart. So, however, if there is no immediate uh, organizational focus on an action, once the training has been conducted, they will lose momentum. So, agar like an ek immediate agar organizational focus nahi hai kisi bhi action pe, to phir us training ka jo hai, um, khas pe jab training conduct ki ja rahi hai, to phir wo obviously wo momentum lose kar dete. So, if we start up interest with a campaign and uh, set up appropriate systems, but fail to show people how they can make a difference, then we have the kind of top-down initiative which does not work best uh, because uh, most people don't know what action to take. So, if we have interest in start-up and campaign set-up and appropriate systems, then we fail to judge this way that people can take a difference in which way they can take a difference. And we have the kind of top-down initiative or as a top-down initiative created in which it does not work because the other people who do not take action, they don't know what to take action. Now, finally, unless we address changing the culture and motivating individuals, process change and training will not make much difference. They uh, could act, but the likelihood is uh, that they will not remember Peters and Watermans in 2004, that system without passion and passion without system. So, when we um, culture change nahi kar dete to phir hum individuals ko motivate nahi kar pate aur ek process change jo hai wo nahi aa sakta and training jo hogi wo usse koi fark nahi padega aur obviously phir they could act but uh, the likelihood is uh, that they will not or wo act kar sakte hain lekin uh, zyada tar ummeed ye hogi ki wo nahi karenge so system without passion and passion without system as in unhone quote kiya Peters. So, for an effective transformation, the three elements need to be kept in balance throughout the process. So, an effective transformation for any organization or institution, these three elements are very important and they need to be kept in balance so that it can be less successful in the process. Now, when we speak about prepare the organization for transformation, so then we say that uh, for most organizations, the transition to a quality management approach is nothing less than a total transformation of the culture of the business. So, if we are preparing for an organization for transformation, we can say that in many organizations, the transition to quality management approach is a total transformation of culture of business. So, develop senior management commitment. No quality management initiative ever succeeded without the genuine commitment of the senior team. In a senior team, if there is commitment, then no quality management program will succeed in any organization or institution. So, this needs to be informed and active commitment. And this is an active commitment in the way of senior management or senior team. So, senior team will need to be role models for the new attitudes and behaviors as well as committing resources to the initiative. They must realize how much effort they are personally responsible for putting in. Without active involvement, uh, the program will falter when people notice their leaders behaving incruently with their words. So, you can say that senior teams become role models, new attitudes, behaviors, as well as committing resources to the initiative. So, obviously, the initiative is to create resources as they create. So, they must realize how much effort they are personally responsible for putting in. And they must realize how much effort they are personally responsible for putting in. Personally responsible for putting in. जो उन्होंने यूज़ करना है, so without active involvement the program will falter. अगर involvement नहीं होगी तो program obviously वो fail हो जाएगा और लोग जो है वो notice करेंगे कि उनके leaders जो है वो अपने लफ्ज़ों पे उन्होंने अमल नहीं किया. So as the leader you need to ensure the team understand your vision and what it means for them. So leader के तौर पे आपको ये नहीं ensure करना है कि आपके team जो है वो understand कर सके कि आपका vision क्या है और आपके लिए वो क्या मायने रखता है. So when we say talk about defined uh, vision mission measures and guiding principles so hum keh sakte hain ki as with a strategic activity the direction of travel is crucial and needs to be articulated as clearly as possible and as early as possible 
So develop the vision and mission within the senior team, uh, within a set of guiding principles which make sense for the organization. So a good starting point for the principles might be Deming's 14 points or the principles underpinning the EFQM excellence model as these are both long established and cohesive sets of principles. So up uh, a strategy of activity, if you want to run a good way to run your organization, then you have a vision, vision or mission, uh, mission which is your senior team uh, guiding principles. And in that way, if you have a good way to run your principles, ka ka, maybe you have Deming ke 14 points or their principles. Ko aap, uh, रीड कर लें या उसको फॉलो करें या फिर आप ईएफक्यूएम के एक्सेलेंस मॉडल के प्रिंसिपल्स को आप फॉलो करें तो फिर आप ऑब्वियसली यू कैन क्रिएट अ बेटर एनवायरनमेंट सो टूल्स टू ट्रांसफॉर्म अगर हम टूल्स टू ट्रांसफॉर्म देखते हैं so there are many books on tools and techniques to support quality. I see many books and techniques that support quality. So they are of course extremely important and are dealt with in some detail in the companion book on this bookboon.com, Six Sigma Principles and Practice. And obviously, there uh, are many important and extremely important hai, quality tools or quality ki techniques to tell you. And maybe there are some of these books, hai, especially one book, hai, bookboon.com. पे six sigma जिसके बारे में हम पढ़ते रहे हैं उसमें principles and practice ये बुक बड़ी important है so this book is intended to deal with the principles and approaches to total um, to quality management rather than the detail of the tools and techniques so uh, we'll not look at them in significant detail so ये बुक जो है इसमें especially um, tools and techniques को नहीं जांच किया गया but um, उसके जो है principles और approaches को ज़्यादा इस बुक में study किया गया so in the last, when we speak about critical success factors, we would say that there are innumerable uh, texts on the factors which lead to success in deploying quality management and consensus is pretty widespread. So the following uh, are a summary. So if we look at innumerable texts or such factors that lead you to success so that you can deploy quality, uh, quality management deploy kar sake ya implement in your organization or institution. Mein. So the consensus is quite widespread. Hai. So we summarize it like this, that senior management commitment should be the most important success factor for almost all the research. This Sari research is the most important factor for the senior management ki commitment. Honi Take a strategic alignment and customer focus. Or strategic alignment and customer focus. Hona uh, this allows for the organization to derive maximum benefits from improvement activities by ensuring that they are working on the things that matter most. Or strategic alignment as you honi chahiye or customer focus as a honi chahiye do up ko allow kare ke up um, organization ko ek uh, maximum benefits ki taraf leke ja raha hota hai or ek improvement activities create karta hai taak ensure kar sake ke up ke jo working uh, have wo ek system jo hai wo dusri chizo se zyada important factor ho. So the last would be that uh, good infrastructure and support up ke hona chahiye Essentially, resources need to be available in the right place. Resources hone chahiye sahi jagah pe, or time or quality hona chahiye to allow for effective uh, execution. Taake or effective execution ka tarika hona chahiye isme. Jo involved jo good infrastructure or support apko deta apke organization ko. So this includes people, money, training, and expertise. In char chizon pe uh, main chiz base karta hai ki apke log, apke employees, apke uh, jo hai money, apke apki training or apki expertise. Then learning comes in. So learning the whole system needs to focus on generating continual learning as well as continual improvement. And a whole system needs to focus on generating continual learning and continual improvement. The last two points are good measurement and recognition systems. To establish success, you need to measure. To maintain commitment, to, uh, you need to recognize efforts and results. So good measurement, aapki, jo hai, ye recognition system, aapka aata hai, ke jab aap achhe tarike se usko measure kar sakte hai, ya maintain kar sakte hai, apni commitment, aur taake aapke efforts jo hai, wo, or results jo hai, wo recognize kiye ja sakte hai. And note that recognition does not have to be monetary. Lekin ye ek, uh, recognition is not the most important part. Uske effect, efforts or results jo hai, that is most important. 
and the last is communication communication is the lifeblood of any quality management system so kisi bhi organization institution mein agar aapne total quality management ke rules ya principles apply karne hain to usme communication ek bahut important role play karta hai and that is the lifeblood of quality management system aur effective two way dialogue wo bahut zaruri hai ki aapke do communication flow aapka jo hai wo successful ho and allows the organization to evolve and priorities to be reviewed and addressed और ऐसी आप ताकि आप एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एक कम्युनिकेशन की बेस पे अपने प्रॉब्लम्स बहुत इजीली सॉल्व कर सकते हैं तो किसी भी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में टोटल क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट के प्रिंसिपल्स और प्रोग्राम्स आजकल मेजोरिटी इंस्टीट्यूशंस में यूज हो रहे हैं एंड दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर दैट यू नीड टू नो हाउ टू यूज दोज टूल्स सो दैट इफ यू इन फ्यूचर गो एंड वर्क इन एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन देन यू कैन इजिली अडेप्ट टू दैट नाउ स्टूडेंट्स दैट इज द एंड ऑफ आर लेक्चर्स एंड आर कोर्स and i hope you've understood everything clearly because total quality management is an important factor in your business studies so uh, i hope everything was clear in it uh, you can look at the summary and you can check out all the slides and um, judge especially the main uh, the important things are the gurus and their especially demins 14 points that's very important so thank you so much take care good day